This episode contains mature language and situations. Listener discretion is advised. You wake to the sound of a train. The clack, clack, clack of wheels. In the distance, is that the sound of birds in a forest? No. It's angels in a choir. Or is it demons from hell? It doesn't matter. You have no memory of how you got here. All you know is that you're lost. And that now, you belong to the Grey Rooms. Hello, roomies. Welcome to the start of your free Patreon week. Bob has a soft spot for the ephemeral, fleshy, talking meat sacks and has arranged a special trip through a different part of hell. We hope you like that fresh from Miss Cleo's kitchen taste that our patrons experience every day. Come check out our new tiers and find a level of management that suits your personality. The next few weeks will feature special drops from our own Duke of the Dirge, J.M. Scherf, exclusive behind-the-door interviews with Brooks Bigley and his surprise guests, plus much, much more to thank you for listening to our nightmares. We'd like to remind everyone that submissions for all Grey Rooms production podcasts are open. That includes Season 5 of The Grey Rooms, Bane, Ghost Signal, your own featured Grey Rooms miniseries, and a new upcoming Grey Rooms production we like to call Fireside Nightmares. So if you have any terrifying tales you think might frighten us, send them over so we can take a stab at it. There will be a link in the show notes with more information on the process, what we're looking for, and how to submit. So sit back and enjoy one of our favorite authors, Jason Porras, as he creeps and crawls his way across your spine with this Patreon-exclusive story made public just for you. So without further ado, please enjoy the public release of The Cries of the Dusk Cicadas. and get the measure of the man. It will, hopefully, make it easier to manipulate and control him during his tenure with the project. Per the Founder's wishes, we will attempt to accommodate these squishy sacks of flesh within the rooms. For example, Mr. Mathis will not be confined to a single room for this outing. 
Despite the Warden's objections, we will allow him to walk the halls of the Keep. He will not find it a comfortable experience, but it will be more humane than past iterations of the room. Only time will tell if this nets out an increase in production from the Loci. Bring him in. Get off me, you overgrown wizard! <laughs> Mr. Mathis. <laughs> Who are you supposed to be? A talking mannequin? No, I am not. I'd like to chat with you for a few minutes. Is that something you can manage without supervision? Or should I ask my friend here to stay? <laughs> Now, I'll sit and talk. <laughs> Not like I have a lot going on right now. Nice eyes. They always glow like that, fella. Yes, and my name is not Fella. You can call me Bob. <laughs> you look more like an arsehole than a bob. But all right, all right. What are we going to talk about? Doilies and finger sandwiches? You were informed that you're to take part in a very important project. Sure, sure, very mysterious. Can't tell me what it's all about, important and secret, blah, blah, blah. Yes, well, your time with the project will begin soon. Ooh, how exciting. I believe if I have some understanding of your personality, your history, it will make for an easier time in the rooms. What? You want to talk about me, Mum? I ask if I used to hurt small animals, maybe get my chilli recipe. I'd actually like to start with your attitude. Have you always been so... combative? <laughs> you could say that. Hey, you know how I died, right? Yes, an explosion. Bloody hell, Bob. A stick of dynamite is an explosion? You know what a thermobaric weapon is? It literally destroys oxygen in the blast, uses it as fuel. Beautiful thing. Deadly and dangerous. <laughs> of course, turns out I might have slightly miscalculated how a weapon of such destructive potential would impact the domes. If I understand this correctly, your entire civilization lived inside of large habitats on the planet's surface. Your life came to an end when you detonated this device. The resulting explosion not only destroyed the dome you targeted, but the overpressure wave rippled through most of the interconnected tunnels. When you were born, the planet's population numbered in the low billions. Only a few hundred thousand survived your demise. Yeah, oops. Interesting. And you don't regret any of the actions you took in life. Bloody hell, Bob. You bet I regret some things. Like, for, for example, my, my last wife had this sweet little friend and I, I still kick myself. <laughs> No, oh, Bob, it's a damn shame. Never got between her legs, sir. She wanted it too. Spicy redhead girl. She used to dream up all sorts of excuses to come by the house. <laughs> but in my last few years, I, I was real focused, you know. I wanted to ensure I'd leave a lasting legacy behind. Make some changes that'd outlive me. Guess I did that, didn't I? I suppose you did. Let's talk about your vendetta. Why did you hate the... I believe it was called the Matriarchy. 
leathery old bitches, yeah. Every dome was run by this old lady, one of the elder women in the clan. Together they all settled his council and dictated how the rest of us would live. It had nothing to do with them being women. You understand? I love women. <laughs> as much and as often as I could. <laughs> now I hated the matriarchy because those saggy titty monsters lived like royalty, like queens. While the rest of us had to scrape and grovel for crumbs. Do you ever know how Alice died? My first wife? Yes, quite heartbreaking. Yeah, I'm sure it keeps you up at night. She was eaten by marauders, eaten, Bob. There wasn't hardly anything left to bury. And it was all because of the matriarchs. They controlled the storehouses, they controlled where the food was distributed, who got to eat everything. The raiders, bleeding psychopaths, would never have come for her if, I, if they'd just been basic supplies. If they'd been able to have a decent meal. I was a happy man once, Bob, before my Alice. Before she died. Now make you happy, you sick fuck! An old man saw her about his sweet dead wife. Take it you hard, Bob. Give your little prick a tingle. No, he does not. And, for the record, at present, this form has no recognizable genitalia. Any more questions? Or can I go back to my shitty cell? Just one more. You have no regrets. That much is obvious. You married and fornicated with regularity, and your existence ended completing your life's work. If you hadn't died, if you'd managed to bring down the matriarchy without killing yourself in the process, what would have been left for you? What would have motivated Todd? Would have motivated. <laughs> 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 I don't understand. You bloody you do. You're trying to get inside my head, aren't you? Trying to understand me. What are you anyway? A, a demon, maybe? Judging by your scaly friend? Huh. Well, yeah. I guess that means I ended up in hell. I mean, that tracks. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, sure you don't. You rapscallion. You wanker. You're trying to work out how my head works so you can make me dance to your little tune. But Bob, uh, uh, I, I, just to let you know, you're real, real bad at this. <laughs> I'm simply trying to understand how... Yeah, I know, buddy. You're trying to understand my human mind. I get it. I don't think this is going to go the way you want it to, though. <sighs> Mr. Mathis... I have to be honest. I find you quite irritating. Oh no! The scarecrow thinks I'm irritating. Will slather me in zappleberries and call me a crumble. If you think you've been irritated before, you ain't seen nothing yet, Bob. I spent my whole adult life tweaking the nose of the matriarchy. I'm really, really good at this, you dickless wonder. If I'm in hell, I ain't gonna be alone. I'm gonna make your time on this project a living. Must be him, right? Quiet, B. 
be. They'll be here soon. we got him in time. Much easier this way. The smell of petrichor in the air was my first sensation. The light drizzle cooled my face. I opened my eyes. Through my rain-blurred vision, I saw an old lady with white hair in a bun. Lines crossed her face. For a moment, I thought she had five eyes, but I blinked and my sight cleared. She held me and her lips trembled. Good. He's awake. Time to go, B. The old lady put a hand on my cheek and looked down. She smiled warmly. She seemed nice. There, there, little one. We got you. Time to go home. We've waited a really long time. She put her hand on my cheek and smiled. I couldn't tell if her eyes were wet due to the rain or from tears, but her words made me feel at ease. I wondered where the others were but it was a fleeting thought, a distant memory from a time long past. <clears throat> As the old man threw me over his shoulder, my face pressed onto his back. The acrid smell of smoke, musky sweat, and something sweet mixed and filled my nostrils. Say, careful. He must be heavy. I'm fine, I'm fine. Let's go already, quickly. Sell a key, right pocket. A small creature buzzed and landed on my nose with a chirp. It was cute. The old lady turned and frowned at it. Get off our boy! Close the door behind us. Yes, dear. Right away. My right arm hung loose to the side. Before we reached the bottom, it scraped against the wall. But my body didn't even flinch. Twilight briefly illuminated the area below. The floor was made of dull gray stone. Cold and sad. Get the light, B. Door two. Yes, say, of course. Light flooded the room and I blinked rapidly. I caught a glimpse of a narrow hallway. Dust bunnies followed us as we went along the path. We passed several wooden doors. All of them had rusted handles and chipped paint. Faded numbers marked each one. Oh, say, how long has it been? So much effort and love wasted. Where are we putting him? When it starts, we won't be able to move him. I know, B. I know. He's an older one. We'll use the big room. Cobwebs spread across the hallway. As we walked straight through them, they settled on my hair. My skin prickled and I felt a sense of dread. I wanted to shake them off, but my body wouldn't move. (coughs) Shh, keep it down. The two of them are searching out there. (laughs) You all right? (sighs) Yes, yes. Sorry, dear. The end of the hallway was near. A set of large metal double doors with the number 17 painted on them in amber red. Shit, they're already here. Okay, get the doors. I have to go clean up and meet with them. You hide down here with him. The 
the old man placed me down on something soft. I looked around. Old memories drifted in my mind, of long ago, when the mothers first had me, before my long slumber. Say, I'll take care of it. Close the doors, B. Okay, I'll go upstairs with those two. Don't forget the air. Not like last time. No need to remind me, Zay. Yes, dear. I was focused on what was in view. A couch covered in plastic, a grandfather clock, and a couple of tables adorned with lace doilies. The old lady turned to look at me, and her sad expression turned bright again. Oh, sweet boy. Are you all right? You can relax now. I kept looking around. Flush with the wall was a wooden box with a glass panel in front. There we go. So, my name is Beatrice. Beatrice Lone. Think of me as Mrs. B. The man from before is Isaiah. Or Zay. One moment and I'll clean you right up. The nice ladies. Mrs. B's face looked happy, but her voice sounded sad. She moved some of the furniture around while humming a somber tune. My thoughts drifted and my right hand caught my attention. The skin was red, where it had hit the wall. You knew why we're here. Where else we look? You're the only place around for miles. Now come on, Zoe. We really don't have time for this nonsense. Where is Beatrice? She's busy. And I really don't appreciate your tone, Evie. You two need to watch what goes on in your own property. Instead of coming here at night making demands. Isaiah, please. Just tell us if you saw him, I beg you. We've been waiting for him to grow for so long and he... He's just disappeared. He wasn't due for a few weeks still, so he... He can't have gone far. Take it easy. Take it easy. You found him. Zoe, we seriously need to talk to Beatrice. Since you clearly don't give a damn. No, listen here. Unless you want to buy some honey, uh, I'll have to ask you to leave. You can talk to B tomorrow. But, but what are we supposed to do? Ladies, I sympathize truly. But as I said, my wife is quite busy. I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for soon enough. Now, come this way. Mrs. B stared above, biting her lip. I couldn't move my neck to peek. I wondered what those voices were about but I soon gave up on those thoughts. Her face sported a smile when she walked back up to me. Don't worry, you pretty a little head about that. Our customers are a little strange. But look at you. Let me clean you up. Mrs. B spent some time fussing over my hair and face. Soon enough, I felt none of those horrible spider webs. There you go. That must feel much better. So, next we should... I wanted to smile at her, but all I managed was to make my right hand twitch again. She noticed and her expression darkened. My goodness, is that blood? She was right. Blood beaded on the wound, little droplets on top of the red skin. They merged and one big drop flowed down my hand. It hung on the end of my finger as if deliberating. It then dropped out of sight. 
It's okay. I'll take care of it. This will sting a bit. A pungent smell filled the air as Mrs. B placed a damp paper on my wound. It burned. She then wrapped my hand with a white cloth. My eyes watered from the pain. She put her hands on my cheeks and used her thumbs to rub the tears away. She smiled, wide. I'm sorry about that, but you'll be safe from now on. Down here with me, with us, always. Say, must be calling me. Let me turn the TV on for you. Something to keep you entertained. Mrs. B twisted a knob on the big box. The screen lit up. It looked like black and white snow. She twisted around for a minute, and a moving picture emerged. Oh, cartoons. Go to sleep when you get tired. I'll be back in the morning with some food. Hope you like honey. She waved and walked out of view. I was alone again. I turned my attention to the bright screen. The words, the ant and the cicada appeared on the screen in a fanciful script. My eyes widened. Oh boy, winter is right around the corner. I'd best gather some food. Tisk tisk, Mr. Ant. Worried about winter already? It's summer now. Take it easy. There's food all around. Come join me on this branch. No, thank you, Mr. Cicada. I have to gather food for Mrs. Ant. We need to be ready. You should prepare before it's too late. Oh, I'm not worried. I can fly, so I can find food wherever I want. You go ahead and work. I'll just relax. The screen showed a big tree with two insects on it. The story resonated with me. I stared, unblinking as Mr. Ant pointlessly moved up and down digging up pieces of food from the ground, while Mr. Cicada happily sat on his branch and puffed some smoke from a tiny cylinder. The scene changed and the leaves of the tree started falling. Oh boy, it's already autumn. Gotta keep going. Winter is almost here. Tisk tisk, Mr. Ant. Surely you've got enough food? Join me up here for a nap. The leaves are so pretty. No thank you, Mr. Cicada. I have to gather food for Mrs. Ant. We need to be ready. You should prepare before it's too late. Pshaw, I have plenty of time. Well, if you change your mind, I'll Mr. be right Ant here. Mr. Ant continued to struggle. I couldn't understand why he worked so hard. I preferred Mr. Cicada's approach. I watched as the sky above the tree darkened and rain fell. My right hand started shaking, but I ignored it. Oh boy, that's a lot of rain. Have to find whatever food is left before it all floats away. Tisk tisk, Mr. Ant. Haven't you worked enough? Join me. It's dry over here. No thank you, Mr. Cicada. I have to gather food for Mrs. Ant. We need to be ready. You should prepare before it's too late. My right hand was vibrating violently at this point. I moved my eyes to glance at it. The gauze was bright red, soaked all the way through. One by one, drops of blood flowed down my index finger and fell straight to the ground and out of sight. I paid it no mind and looked back at the screen. White snow fell and covered everything in sight. Oh boy. Winter is here. Good thing I gathered all that food. Mrs. Ant, the kids and I have plenty to eat. Um, Mr. Ant, do you maybe have some food to spare? I tried searching for some, but I couldn't find any. Please? Tisk tisk, Mr. Cicada. I'm sorry, but we have all the food we need, and none to spare. You should have prepared. Now it's too late. <laughs> Tears streamed from my eyes as I watched Mr. Cicada fall off of the tree. Dead. He hadn't made it. 
I couldn't understand why Mr. Ant hadn't shared. My vision blurred. I hated Mr. Ant. I hated- <laughs> My eyes hurt when they opened. I was dizzy and tired. I looked at the screen, back to black and white nonsense. Damn it, B. You was bleeding last night. Why didn't you tell me then? You know how this works. He'll shrivel up and, and Gigi and Kiki are snooping around. Tell me these things sooner. Fucking hell, woman. I swear, if he's too far gone and we lost another one... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I treated the scrape. I really didn't think it would be an issue. He seemed fine. Please don't. Please don't get rid of him. Mrs. B and Mr. Isaiah walked into view. His face was red and her cheeks were wet. I tried to move. My right hand twitched. I thought you said you treated him. B, what the damn hell is this? There's a pool of blood. But I did. I did. I remember I did. Is he okay? Sweetheart, are you okay? No, B, stop. Just go get some towels and the honey. Now, I'll deal with this. But... I said now, woman. You've done more than enough. Mrs. B looked from me to Mr. Isaiah and back. She raised a hand to her mouth and then rushed out of view. He sounded mean, but also concerned. I felt fine, so I tried to show him, but the movement just made blood fall from my finger. What a mess. But you're special, aren't you? So much lost and still looking fine and dandy. <laughs> eh, well, ain't that something. By the time Mrs. B returned, Mr. Isaiah had re-wrapped my hand and moved me to the couch. She rushed in, holding a bunch of towels in a big glass jar. It was filled with a thick, amber-colored liquid. Say, is... is he going to be okay? Yes, I think so. He's strong. Sorry for snapping at you, B. It's the pressure. It got to me. We've worked so hard. I didn't want another failure. Help me clean this up. Oh, thank goodness. Yes, dear. Right away. They rolled up the stained carpet. Blood had seeped to the stone below. They cleaned the room in silence and left. I stared at the glass jar on the table beside me. I could smell it. A rich, sweet aroma. It reminded me of Mr. Isaiah's clothes. Only much, much stronger. Drool dripped from the side of my mouth. I'm so, so sorry. You had to go through that. Time for the honey. Slowly now. We have to avoid... Never mind. The cloying smell assaulted my nostrils. Pinpricks erupted across my body, and I felt my skin ripple and stretch. My stomach growled like some ferocious beast. My, you must be very hungry. Here you go, then. She brought the honey towards me. My mouth stretched. On its own. I heard my bones pop and I felt my jaw unhinge. My head tilted backward and I got my first view of the ceiling. Honey-colored hexagons. The honey then dripped down my throat. It was so sweet. My jaws clamped down. Hard. Ah! Ouch! Oh, sweetie, I, I'll be right back. Don't move, okay? 
I felt the viscous liquid drip down my throat. There was something else mixed in. It was even sweeter, but not enough. I tried to move. My right arm slowly rose up. Clumsily, I used it to maneuver my head. I wanted, I needed to see where the honey was. The smell, it was there. I could see it. I could feel it. I crawled forward. In the honey was a swirl of red, Mrs. B's blood. I clawed at the ground to reach it. My fingernails ripped out first. Then my flesh peeled off to the bone. Then the fingers completely fell apart. Pieces of me melted as my skin stretched and tore open. My tongue extended out, becoming thinner and longer, reaching further. I lapped at the honey and the sweet red juice mixed within. Oh no, what did they do? It's way too soon for him to molt. Fuck! Mo Mother's feed. Feed me. No. No, not this again. Turn it back. I, I can't lose another baby. Gigi, do something. Hungry. Need. Blood. No. Please, there's really nothing we can do. What do you want from me, Gigi? Shit. I'll find my baby boy you want to eat and go. Go, child. Go devour those who would chain you. Go and feast! Mother pointed towards the food. I heard the screams. I chased on all six of my legs. Outside. My stomach yearned for their blood. My new wings stretched out and I took flight. There, I saw the man, the meal. I pounced quickly and landed on the morsel. Oh. Uh, damn it all, I thought we had more time uh, to change you. I stabbed him with my mouth. The ruby color of his blood spilled all around, and I sucked it all up. It was so good, so sweet, so tasty. I found her. More of the delicious blood was in sight. pierced her stomach as she spoke. Her sweet nectar flowed within me. I drank deeply of her lifeblood. Do we have to? Please. Gigi, can't we just raise him like this? We'll figure it out. No, damn it. He's far too gone. He'll never revert. It's way too dangerous. Gigi, he's a boy. I don't want to be alone for that long again. Oh, Kiki. Well, we'll just have to wait another 17 years. Fuck the loans and their twisted experiment. I should have...
I guess it doesn't matter now. The mothers were there. I finished my meal and turned to them. Mothers? Cries of the Dusk Cicadas, written by Jason Porras, with performances by Michael Turrentine as the boy, Margaret Ashley as Beatrice Lone, Joe Stofko as Isaiah Lone, Aaron Lillis as Gigi Semi, Aaron King as Kiki Semi, Graham Rowett as Mr. Ant and Mr. Cicada, Mr. Mathis, I presume, written by Michael Zenke, featuring performances by Graham Rowett as Bob and Alistair Mackey as Todd. Musical composition is by J.M. Scherf. Episode artwork, web development, and creative direction by Cassie Pertit. Social media and Patreon management by Brooks Bigley. Videography is by Hale Scherf. Community management by Tori Miller. Audio engineering and sound design is by me, Jason Wilson. Well, patrons, be careful what you set free because sometimes it might just come back and bite you. <laughs> We would also like to take the time to thank our patrons once again and to any of those who have taken the time to leave us a five-star rating and review. Those reviews keep us at the top of the charts and makes it easier for more twisted souls to find the show. Patrons like Ellen Houghton, Eric Pritchard, Eric Foams, Jackal Bot Snows, Lynn Browning, Matthew Smithdeal, Patrick Stewart, Ronan Kumori, Sean Gary, Amanda Siegfried, Annalise Belladonna, Arthur Unk, Doozer Pendon, Dustin Armstrong, Engineer Sai, Evan Jaffe, Gage Mecro, GT, Jason Porras, Joanna Walker, Katie Tatry, Kay Davis, Kelly Bear, Meza, Meg Pexson, Michael Kreps, Michael Velez, My Ex Does Porn, Mick Paul Jims, Nightmare Rabbit, Puss for Gene 69, Ramius, Rhiannon, Richard Wright, Riley Warren, Ryan McGann, Sandy King Carpenter, Scott Johnson, Talicia Gullman, That Guy 7747, The Good Prof, Teresa Tabor, TJ Hodder, The Undisputed Baron of Disneyland, Wolf Delta Pie, Zectros Veraskul, Sh- Zectros Veraskul Shaktolas, Aaron Anthony, Adam Poston, Amy Nikolai, Ora Hart, Colton Quickle, Ellie Dowell, Emily Cullen, Harrison Lively, Julian Rether, Klaus H, Laura Lupinetti, Mary Jane Dillavu, Pake Carey, Ryzan the Mad, Spirit Live. IJP the Great, Mojo Neeson, Soldier of Krieg, and Rissa M. The Grey Rooms is also streaming for free on Spotify. Just get the Spotify app or open the browser and search The Grey Rooms. And we here at The Grey Rooms love our fans and want to give back to you in the best way that we know how. We have a lot of fun things to show you, and we hope that you like them. You can find out more by joining us on social media. You can find us on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, and Facebook. And we took your advice and extended an olive branch to all of the tortured souls who have passed through the rooms. Our emotional support group is always looking to help you with all of your needs. And don't forget about our merch store. It's full of epic designs and logos for you to support, showing the world that you are a survivor of these very rooms. All of this can be found in the show notes or on our website at thegrayrooms.com. And of course, I always sit here and glow about our Discord channel. 
If you're not there, I told you enough, you're missing out. Movie nights, game nights, best community in the world. You can be part of that. Hit the link below or go to our website and join today. Promise you, you will not regret it. So, free Patreon weeks. This is the start. Hope you enjoy it. We have a lot more in store for you, which means we have a lot more work to do. So, we're going to go ahead and jump right back on that. But thanks for being here. And please, enjoy this little inside look at what it is like to be a patron of the Grey Rooms, which we would appreciate if you would consider joining. So, we will get back to work. Until then, we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye. This has been a Grey Rooms production. Copyright 2021 and 2022.